Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this Blitz Chess postmortem, a postmortem of my Blitz game number 428. Uh, my opponent kicked off with e4, and I chose to play e5, getting a classical kind of game, knight f3, knight c6, and my opponent chooses to play bishop c4, the Italian game. So this is a, a line I often play myself as white, so it's kind of interesting to see it from the other side. As black, I normally play bishop c5 rather than knight f6, which is the main alternative of the two knights defense, but I like getting the bishop out and uh, I don't like some of the lines in the two knights defense. It's a, it's a difficult defense. Okay, c3 and uh, knight f6. This is a normal move, just attacking the uh, e-pawn while um, black is white. White is preparing to build up a center with d4. So this sort of interrupts white's plan. And the normal move here, and you'll see this, I think, amongst top players when they play this, they'll always play the move d3. So d4 is a bit of a risky move, <laughs> and, uh, but it leads to interesting play. And uh, it's not all that bad. So, uh, but it does involve a pawn sacrifice, particularly in the line chosen here. So e takes d4, c takes d4, and then check. And there are other ways to play this. You can try playing with uh, either bishop d2 or knight to d2, which are ways to uh, uh, actually hold on to the pawn. <clears throat> Although the bishop d2 line is kind of tricky as well. Um, although, if, if uh, let, I'll go and show a few moves of that. If um, if black just exchanges, then the knight comes here and defends the pawn. The and then uh, and the material is even, and white has a slight opening edge, so that's fine. The tricky line after uh, bishop d2 is the uh, if if uh, the knight takes the pawn anyway, <laughs> and uh, this actually uh, is okay for white, but uh, like I say, it's a tricky line. So you can grab here. Bishop takes b4. Knight takes b4. And then there's a sacrifice on f7. So the, the point is that uh, this knight is a bit loose on b4. So if you can remember this tactic, you can uh, get a good position as white in that uh, bishop d2 line. Basically, bishop takes, king takes, and then queen b3 check picks up the knight. And uh, white is doing okay there. So anyway, let's go back to the game. Uh, knight c3 is, is one of the top moves there. Let's see. Let's look at that in the opening book. Actually, bishop d2 is a little more popular. I always thought knight c3 was kind of the main line. Um, and this leads to the Mueller attack. So knight takes e4 and uh, castles. So dot, just uh, <clears throat> continuing with development, sort of ignoring the fact that uh, white is a pawn down at this point. But uh, really active pieces are, are good compensation. And in fact, um, taking with the knight here on c3, now that the... Um, now that the knight is unpinned, it's threatening just to win this knight, so something has to be done. Taking with the knight is a bit dangerous, so the normal move is bishop takes. So if you take with the knight, um, just b takes, and then um, the bishop can't really take back. If you take here, then queen to b3 is a, an attack on the bishop and an attack on the uh, f7 square, and um, and black is in trouble. So. Uh, so after this move, uh, the counterattacking move, d5, can be played. But uh, in the complications, white comes out a little bit ahead. So, so the main move here is um, bishop takes. So you don't have this loose piece on b4, effectively. And then um, d5 is the Mueller attack, pressing on, not taking back immediately. Although, if you look at the chess engine, it actually thinks there are three uh, playable moves here. The d5 move, b takes, c3, taking back, and also queen c2. So these are all kind of interesting ways to play. And uh, you can't entirely trust the uh, instant evaluation of the chess engine. You really need to let it sit on the position for a while and uh, calculate. But it looks like in all these lines, white gets uh, compensation for the pawn. So it might be this queen c2 line might be interesting as kind of a surprise weapon uh, because you see it's not in the opening book. And it looks like uh, you know white needs to get a piece back still. White's still a piece down, but this is a double attack. And um, let's see, uh, the engine is recommending d5 and b takes c3. And now this is kind of cute. Um, if the pawn takes bishop, then queen takes knight. So at this point, uh, um, black plays some other move, bishop f5 or castles. Interesting. Okay, so all those things can be played, but uh, d5 is a Miller attack. Here, let's go back to the opening book. And that's the way I play it myself. And um, I knew that the main move is bishop back to f6. You want to get the, the bishop out of trouble. 
and then rook e1 is, is a little better than taking the knight immediately. If you take the knight immediately, you're giving up another pawn, whereas rook e1 will win this knight here. And now um, the main move is knight e7, although it looks like castling is okay. So I castled, and he played uh, rook takes e4. And now maybe I could try the move knight a5. I didn't notice that. I played knight e7 here. All this is still okay, and then he pushes on with d6. So at this point, we're really out of the opening book, so we can just look at the uh, notation page here. Um, I should just take this pawn right away. The move I played here, knight g6, is an actual mistake, and I was uh, uh, lucky I, I, uh, <laughs> I got away with this. So knight g6, he has a really strong move, queen e2. And uh, so this is uh, uh, not the typical tactic in this position, but something to keep an eye on. So notice that white has complete domination of the e-file. I can't oppose on the e-file with the rook. And if I take, um, white can exploit that uh, control of the e-file with a move like bishop takes f7. So, uh, so it's not safe for my rook to take the bishop because this rook coming in here will fork the queen and the king. So the king has to move away, and uh, this is uh, looks like an excellent position for white. Okay, so my opponent uh, missed that uh, queen e2 idea, but played queen d5, which is also a good move. Um, and I decide to grab the pawn here. I guess that's okay. I need to get the pawn back. And then he goes bishop to f4. So right here I took the bishop, and it looks like that was uh, another mistake. Let's see, I have two extra pawns, but obviously black is going to get one of them. And, um, you know, in a way, I would, I would just as soon be rid of both those pawns because it's blocking in my light squared bishop. So that's, that's really my problem in the position, and that's uh, white's advantage here. And uh, why you can see white actually has an edge in this position. Um, even though down a couple of pawns, he's just kind of sitting on my pieces here, and I can't get them into the game, and, and I struggle the rest of the uh, game. So I, I thought exchanging off this knight would help. But uh, this is one of my only developed pieces, one of my few developed pieces, I should say. So I think exchanging it is the wrong idea. Um, knight e5 is, is a suggestion, trying to block the e-file. Knight e5, bishop g5, queen c7, just trying to unravel slowly. Okay, so knight takes f4 is a mistake. He plays rook takes f4, and you see the evaluation just went up here. And um, I push forward with a5, I'm trying to uh, liberate the rook over here. And now he could play knight to g5. I think that's the problem with all of these moves, is he can start um, crashing through on the, um, on the f7 square. So, uh, so this also would have been uh, a losing, <laughs> would have been losing for me if uh, white had found the right moves. But he played rook d1. He's going to gather up this pawn first. He still keeps a pretty strong edge. Push on with a4. I had the idea of getting my rook all the way to the uh, fifth rank and defending this way. Um, and so he chooses to take the pawn back at this point. So that's the mistake. Huh? This is what lets me back in the game. So once again, knight g5. Just leaving these pawns here and uh, continuing to sit on the position is the best way for white to play. Let's take a look at this. Knight g5. And what if I go rook to uh, a5 here? Knight takes f7. Oh, knight takes f7, hits my queen. Ah, so if I take his queen, he takes my queen with check. <laughs> and uh, so what do I have to do? It says rook takes... Oh, it's not check. My rook is still in the way. Let's back up. I can take the knight. But then he takes my rook with check. And we'll see king to f8, say. So let's stop and count the material. I have a rook and two bishops, and he has two rooks and one bishop. So he's up the exchange. Um... But the bishop is pinned, and uh, g4 immediately to take advantage of that. Huh. Okay, so another example of uh, sitting on the position and attacking in the f7 square. Uh, he played queen takes d6, and now I am somehow back in the game. I get my rook out. Um, he plays the rook up to d5. And uh, I go b6. That was my other idea. Get the rook out and then open up a diagonal for the bishop. So we're back to even, basically. Uh, white is still a pawn down, but uh, the peace activity uh, makes up for it. Um, the only thing that white needs to be careful about is this back row is uh, weak. So if I can find some tactic to hit the back row, um, that could be very lucrative for me. Um, he decides at this point to trade off my active rook and um, take back. 
So he is uh, giving me these uh, doubled pawns over here on the A file. If he wins this pawn, then uh, you know I think white would be better once again. But still, looks like it's in the range of even. Knight to d4. Trying to get the knight into the game. And now rook to e8. So I get, get my uh, last piece into the game. Well, the bishop's not there still, but I'm getting another piece into the game, I should say. G3 to um, secure the back rank. But now it's starting to look like uh, a black is doing okay. I've, I've still I've held on to my extra pawn, and my pieces are gradually unraveling. So, uh, so there was something that wasn't quite accurate there. I guess it was that knight to d4 move. Uh, the engine likes h4 or knight e5. So h4 or h3, giving giving some space to the king, followed by knight e5. Okay, so those are the ideas in this position to keep an edge, or to keep a, an, an even position for white, keep compensation for the pawn. Still that, yeah, knight e5 is still targeting this um, this pawn on f7, and if I give up the bishop, then I'm losing the, one of my advantages, which is I have the edge in the, uh, the uh, bishop pair. So, okay, knight d4 was played, rook e8. And then bishop b7, getting my bishop out. So knight goes back to f3, blocking this diagonal. And I go queen to e7. So I'd be happy to get the queens off here and, and go into an endgame of pawn up. And um, so he obliges by queen takes, rook takes. And um, so I should be uh, doing okay here. He shouldn't have traded queens, actually. He should have just retreated his queen. Queen b6 or queen d1, somewhere with the queen. So this... Uh, this is now, uh, I'm starting to get a little bit optimistic about this game. I've survived uh, the attack. I've gotten into an end game where uh, I have a pawn up and I have the, the bishop pair. Uh, but it's not entirely simple. So he retreats his bishop and um, I traded. So that's the mistake. Um, I should play something like h6, once again, securing my back rank so I don't have uh, threats, <laughs> threats of back rank mates. And then uh, Let's see, h6 and then uh, bishop to c6. Okay, and just holding on to the pawns and just trying to uh, kind of sit on the position for a while, it looks like. Okay, so this trade, I was a little over-eager to trade. I guess I was still in the mood of uh, trading after, you know, that's what you do to escape uh, escape all of these problems. <laughs> well, I also, I saw the idea of winning the b pawn here. So bishop takes f3, rook takes f3, bishop takes b2. and uh, But he has rook e3 here. And, um, yeah, I was hoping to go into an endgame and keep my rook. I don't really want to trade rooks. The problem is that the bishops are of opposite colors. So uh, that was a case of just not calculating far enough ahead. So before I had gone into the sequence, I should have realized uh, he was going to have the ability to trade off my rook, and I would end up at a bishop of opposite color endgame. So that's the thing to do. I wonder if just um, leaving everything as it is and moving the rook to a different square is an idea at this point. Say rook there. Yeah, that keeps an edge too. Just get the rook uh, to a more active post where it can slide along to either side. And um, and also h3 to secure the back rank. Things like that. And uh, not allowing the trade of rooks in particular. This, um, okay, after bishop takes, rook takes, takes there and there. After the rooks come off, then the bishops of opposite color is a real problem. If the rooks would stay on, then uh, this is an end game with a advantage to black. But um, anyway, that's what happened. The rooks came off, and now we have a, a bishop of opposite color end game. And I don't think there's any way to win this uh, anymore. I have you know a slight edge in terms of a pawn, but um, <clears throat> there's just no way to uh, to push it through. So let's see if there was nothing. There was no opportunity here. I just wanted to go through the rest of the game, see if I had any chances to break through. But it looks like. No, there weren't really any. So we agreed to a draw at this point. Well, I think it was a draw by repetition. So that's how the game ended. Anyway, pretty interesting uh, game. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Leave any comments you have in the section below, and I will see you again soon. Bye.